Let's see. Goran those sweats. Wow. I held seven day chain link. I believe in chain link too. That, all those things that I just showed you guys, I own all of them except for Shiba Inu. I don't, I just don't get into that. But does that mean that's not going to be awesome? No, it just means that I don't own it. I don't own a lot of them. I don't own a lot of them. So that's it. Dr. Payne is here, who came in 11th. Congratulations, Dr. Payne, in the Sweat Coin Steps Challenge. Very nice. Uh, Richard Hart is hiding out somewhere in Europe. Interesting. Doubt will ever go back to the U.S. Ah, oh, oh, someone's calling something a scam. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a day unless somebody in crypto was calling something a scam. Uh, ETH is the future. Name of it? No. Hex, sure, whatever. Bitcoin Cash, never heard of it. I used to have Bitcoin Cash. I actually interviewed Roger Veer, super nice guy. I used don't understand why we need Bitcoin Cash. Maybe I'm just seeing it wrong. <laughs> I'm the Ada whale. Uh, yeah, YouTube notifications are just crazy. Sometimes you get notified, sometimes you don't. Just how it is. Ah, Achilles. Ada is a ghost chain. Yes. Yes, it's a ghost chain. Nobody builds on that. Nobody. Eh. Hello. Uh, okay. We'll get to the questions. Yeah. Mark G, do you promote Bitcoin? I do promote Bitcoin. I promote everything that I own. Uh, so you have to understand that I'm super biased on this channel. So like the things that I get into and I talk about are the things that I actually use. So like uh, the stone book and like I trust and masterworks and uh, coin ledger for tax tax purposes and epic art for crypto art. just stuff that I use. And of course, all the cryptos that I uh, invest into very, very biased here. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's true. And th think about this way. Everything that's out there. Look. Everybody has their opinion that something is a scam in crypto, right? Something is a scam in crypto. And then people outside of crypto in traditional markets will say that the entire cryptoverse is a scam. No matter what you hold, somebody out there believes it is worthless. And if you hold precious metals, same thing. People say, we don't understand why you even hold precious metals. And of course, you can give me arguments and whatnot, but trust me when I say this, there's somebody out there who believes that you are incredibly stupid for any of your investments that you do. It's just how it goes in, in the world. And you can't please everybody. <laughs> eh, it's just how it is. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Rob Payne and Particle. They bought a bank scene, broken a thousand NFTs and sold them. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how they're getting away with that because that is definitely a security if they're doing that. Uh like Masterworks, the guys that I work with, and I bought a bank scene a basket off them. That's how they did it, but they don't use NFTs. They register everything with the SEC and they put every different, uh, every piece of art that they own, uh, they register it as its own separate LLC and you own a fractionalized share of it. Kind of like a real estate investment trust or an REIT, kind of. So yeah, I don't know how they're doing that though. And that must be flying on, under the radar. Yeah, it's true. We all, let's be honest, we all do love a good scam. <laughs> Mark G, tell us what to buy. I can't tell you that. <laughs> Look, uh, you know, I've been wrong a lot, right? I mean, come on. How many times did I talk about Voyager? How many times did I ha talk about, how many times did I have uh, Alex Muskamsky uh, on this channel talking about Celsius? I can't give anybody any advice. Uh, I can only tell you what I'm doing. And that's the, essentially it. So I can tell you what I'm dollar cost averaging right now with some 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 provisions. So like I'm buying, uh, let's see, let's go take a look at the list. And by me telling you this doesn't mean you should go do that. I'm also going to have a big bowl of cereal tonight. And uh, if you're lactose intolerant, I wouldn't want you to do that either. So 
again, here we go. So I will be, and I'm dollar cost averaging the regular amounts, not micro. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polygon, Polkadot, Avalanche, Chainlink, Cosmos. And I should have gotten a file coin, but I just never really felt like it was the good thing. Near, here and there. Algorand sometimes, but it's few and far between these days. That's about it. Oh, and Terra Luna. No, I'm just kidding. I don't buy that. That's junk. Sorry if you're into Terra Luna. I just don't buy that. But that's about it. And there's a couple other ones that are way far down the list that I won't talk about because they're way too risky. And, uh, you know, like even like me talking about those things, people will still be like, oh, Bitcoin must be great. Let me just sell my house and buy it because people don't do their own research. So uh, I'll keep the other ones close to my chest and go from there. Uh, let's see. Told you. Hey, that's awesome. Rob, what cold wallet is the most easy in your opinion? So I'm, again, pretty biased on this one. I use Nano Ledger. I got a couple of those, three of those now, actually. And um, that's just easiest for me. But people say they don't like it. Some people tell me that Trezor is super easy to use, probably because they're used to it. Uh, I've used the Arculus wallet. I'm not for sure that is really like the cold cold storage. I think there's still some some issues with it. But I like Arculus, the that little metal. Do I have it here? Yeah, there it is. Looks like this. Uh, eh, that one. It's pretty cool. It's like like just using it as like a regular wallet, like like a wallet wallet, like how you would put 20, 200 bucks in your wallet, right? And just walk around and buy stuff. You wouldn't put, I don't know, $10 million in your wallet and walk around. But uh, this I think is pretty cool. Just if you want to buy things throughout wherever you can buy things. That's about it. So uh, I can't really tell you which one's easy. To me, honestly, uh, that ledge is pretty easy uh, to use. But some people have other opinions and it's just because I don't really use anything else. Ah, oh, you son of a, it's a sick invite, bright guy. I like that. I like mostly the beer. Barbecue, I'll actually, I'll take both of those. Can you recommend any YouTubers to do more active day swing trading? Yeah, Tom Crown. Tom Crown seems to be a pretty good one. And then uh, Meme, who was the guy you were talking about that really does good TA? Put that put that person's uh, YouTube channel in the comment section. Who else is good? Mullet's good. He just doesn't have a YouTube channel. He taught me some things. Who else is good? I don't really follow too many people with the with the TA stuff because I don't really get into it. Again, it bores me. It puts me to sleep. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what this means. What's the difference between believing in an altcoin and, and roll it? Mullet? I don't know. Uh, any news about World Mobile Token? There was something that came out. Well, if you're a, a node operator like I am, uh, you had to uh, transfer your, your tokens to get a specific uh, NFT so you continue being a node, uh, world, uh, Earth node operator. That's about it. But there's a couple of big news. Oh, there is one big news. Uh, I was talking to Mickey Watkins and they're going to, I have this, we have this sports facility in, in El Paso. It's a, uh, it's a sand volleyball, sand soccer complex and pretty fun place to play. We've had it for like 13, 14 years. And uh, I told them, I said, Hey, if you guys want to, cause they're going to branch out world mobile token, which brings telecommunications to different areas where it doesn't have it, especially in like third world countries. I said, hey, if you want to put one up at my facility, because it's kind of out there uh, away from the city, I go, I'll definitely allow you guys to do that. He said, yeah, sure. So it looks like they're going to do that uh, sometime this year. I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, helicopter, good question. What happens if crypto on and off ramps are hunted down? Well, then we just become, unfortunately, more underground and things slow down. However, I got to tell you, it's a funny thing because when things start to go underground, they became a hell of a lot more expensive. I mean, just take a look at prohibition. I mean, I don't, uh, 
I was not around at that time, but uh, I hear that uh, alcohol became super expensive because it became illegal and people really wanted it. So when you have a product, good or service that people want and people can't get that because it becomes illegal in some way, shape or form, then the price tends to uh, increase. However, now that we're in the digital age, all it means for us is if it's going to be an on off ramp issue, you, you can understand I'll probably be in places like America and India if that really happens. So what it'll mean, it just means that it just gets pushed like a balloon deflating. It just gets pushed to another side. So America deflates a little bit and it fills up over in Poland or it deflates a little bit. And then, of course, you know, the EU takes it up or Australia, whatever else. And then or Asian markets, it doesn't matter. So for me, I just see like we're not in the 19, early 1900s where when one section shuts down and, and just destroys it for everybody. It just one country gets left out. I'd like to not have America left out, but if they want to do that, then they're making a huge mistake and we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, crypto's got a good point. And, and crypto will most likely outperform its done since inception. Nothing else has really topped it yet, so there is that. Yeah, I mean, since inception, of course, done pretty well. Do you recommend multiple stores? Yes, I do. Because there's just this thing that I'm always worried about. Fear is a big driver. So like if I kept, I don't know, like $5 million or $10 million on one ledger, I would feel kind of neurotic about that. I mean, granted, if, see, I'm looking for a ledger. I don't know where it is right now. So if, if my ledger gets lost, okay, it gets lost, or it gets run over, or something gets damaged, or it just the circuitry goes bad. You can't charge. Well, it's not lost because I have mnemon my mnemonic phrase in my book. But let's just say for some reason, and this is why I have multiple books in different areas as far as like my mnemonic phrases in my stone book. Let's just say for some, some reason, I don't know what happens, they all get destroyed. It all gets wiped out. I don't know how. Then everything's gone on that one. So if I keep it in multiple, I feel a little bit safer. That's just me. Some people just put it on one, and they're like, eh, whatever. But some people are crazy because they've got like 10 million is no big deal to them. To me, that's a lot of money. What do you think about the graph? No real opinion. I don't own it, so I don't even talk about it. Graph AI is sleeping giant. Sure it is. Uh, thoughts on we versus Filecoin. Heard a bit of Paul Barone showing that. Talk to Paul Barone. Uh, that guy seems to know. He's got a great team behind him, so... Meme, I'm not for sure on that one. And meme, don't forget, what's the name of that guy that is the, the TA you were talking about? Mm, yeah. Jada Day says dot claims to be a software, not a security. They wrote, I forgot the name of the, uh, I think it's a no contest letter. They wrote that to the SEC and said, look, we're on a security. We're just software. So please exclude us from all these Wells notices and litigation. And they're still waiting for an answer from the SEC, which is like what everything is going through. So yeah, Polkadot, I own a bunch of that. Hopefully it makes itself out. Who knows? That's why I like to diversify. <laughs> Rob, I still love the Voyager price prediction. Yeah, 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 see, can't trust anybody. Like I thought it would go up pretty high. I remember when it was, it was 29 cents. I said, it's gonna go to 30 bucks. And it went from 29 cents to a dollar to three, five and seven. And it went back down to five. And then it went down, and then of course, Voyager. Voyager is a weird one because they just did a very dumb thing, and that dumb thing was, I mean, they weren't as scammy as Celsius. And there's a lot of things coming on in Celsius, and if you guys aren't watching uh, Simon Dixon, uh, Aaron Bennett, or Tiffany Fong about Celsius or No Stop Pete or Pete No Stop, watch those guys because they have their pulse on what's going on with Celsius and the just the straight up lies they were doing. But Voyager was different. Voyager wasn't a scam scam. They just did a stupid thing, which is they gave Three Arrows Capital a 640 some million dollar loan without any collateral. Who does that? Just because, you know, these guys were supposedly the wonder, the wonder kids. That's the thing. And uh, that's why I still, I look at it and go, gotta diversify. And that's it. Scamansky took my Bitcoin, took mine too. I got a whopping six figures tied up in Celsius. What are you going to do? And I can tell you guys that because everybody knows that because they doxed everybody and put the, 
the judge the judge put everybody's like information online not like your address but like your name and how much you had so yeah that's how much i have what are you gonna do nothing you can do just wait that's why i really liked simon dixon's plan made a lot of sense to me hedera link dot sand those are solid i own some sandbox chain link polka dot Dr. Ryan, I don't know, man, because like, I mean, Gary Gendler's not going to do it. That guy's really, really streamlined for me personally. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I kind of feel like Gary's making up for lost times. All the meetings that he had with Sam Bakeman fried and all the different meetings that he's possibly had with other exchanges, he just missed the boat. And uh, he could have done a lot of things with Celsius and Voyager, potentially BlockFi, but he really missed the boat on FTX, and that was the big blow up. And now it's like he's making up for lost time. You know when you kind of, when you screw up and then you overcompensate? That's what I feel like he's doing and he's going to do moving forward because, you know, he missed it. Let's be honest. If your job was to protect the little guy, you, you, you failed miserably. That's not my, that's, I'm not the, the SEC chair, so. Tom Williams says, obviously, DOT has been classified as software, not security. If that just came out in the last 48 hours, I haven't seen it. But I know that they requested that letter. I don't believe it has been granted by the SEC. So, uh, try some ETH too. What about, Mr. Wolf says, what about real estate and homes? Way to buy some to rent out? That's a tricky question. So like for me and the wife, we're always looking for, for real estate. Like we have condos here and apartments and house other places, but like we don't try to like say, okay, well, this is the time. If there's a good deal that comes, there's always a, a deal somewhere. And it just depends. But then you got to think about this, like is real estate going to go down? I mean, it could go down massively. I don't know. I thought we were going to have a much harder landing and we, we could still have it. But for right now, with the rates that is, as, as much as they are, although I will say, you know, rates, what, 5.25% and then you're looking at six, six and a quarter, whatever it is now, seven, six, between six and 7% for, for APR for mortgages. That's high, but it's not as high as like, say, the, the, the early 80s. You're looking at 13, 14, 15%. So like, it's still low in that context, but not in the, uh, you know, two and a, two and three quarters, 3.25% APYs that we were getting for mortgages, not more than, you know, two, three years ago. So for me, I look at it and I'm just like, um, if there's so many factors to do for everybody, like, you know, are you doing short term? Are you doing, are you doing short term rentals? Are you doing long term rentals? What is the market like in your area? Are your, are, are your houses overpriced? Are you in a New York? Are you in a Miami? Are you in an Austin? Are you in Los Angeles? Or are you like in, in a Dubuque, Iowa or Cleveland, Ohio type place? I mean, there's just, and then of course, what's the markets? How are the comparables? And you have to look at a lot of things. So for Mr. Wolf, I can't, can't even ask you that, answer that question. It's very tough. You got to do a lot of research. Yes. Ah, that's it. So everybody look for this guy, more crypto online. I think he's got a YouTube channel and he does really good TA. I haven't watched it though. This is meme. I trust her, so. Yeah, Rob, I got a Legend Nano S Plus since it's even better than the regular Nano S. Great. I just like the, I just dislike the Nano Ledger S because it couldn't hold squat. Uh, the Nano X can hold a bunch of different, uh, or the the software to interact with the crypto projects. It doesn't really actually hold your crypto. Obviously, it just allows you to you know sign off on transactions. That's it. Check out the chart, guys. Do live trading. Second. Day trading won't let you sleep. Exactly. That's why I don't do it. Mullet says it's Russian roulette. That's coming from a trader. Uh, insane clown posse is also really... Just kidding. Internet computer protocol. Really cool. Decent ICP. Uh, let's see. What do you think about Algorand? I think it's massively underperforming right now. But uh, I don't know. Macaulay, person that uh, 
is the head of the foundation. Seems to be a quite a smart individual. Looks like they're going in the right direction, but it really just depends on adoption. Who's going to use it? Who's going to make it work? And, you know, who was it that was on the show? The Mooch, Scaramucci, him and his uh, Skybridge Capital. They invested, a, like, I want to say it was, a, it was a quarter of a billion dollars in Algorand. And they said, yeah, we did our due diligence. It looks pretty good and fantastic. And I was like, oh, interesting. Of course, they also did their due diligence on FTX, and we'll see how that worked out. So who knows? I can't tell you. Hmm. So can't get it right. <laughs> it's got a great question. Rob, do you really think the bottom is in? What's your opinion? I I thought our bottom, I thought the bottom wasn't in. But it seemed like it's funny because like everybody said the bottom was in in June at uh 176. And I was like, okay, bottom's in. A lot of a lot of TA people, a lot of people look at charts and all those things. And I was like, I don't think it's in. I think there's something to happen. And then it went down to 15.6 or 15.7, somewhere around there in November 2022. And then people said, that's the bottom. And I've been saying that I don't think it's the bottom still. And so far, I've been wrong on that one. So like, it seems like everybody's been wrong on this one. So not for sure. I will just say, let me show you. Yeah. I will say one thing, and that's like if we're just looking at cycles. So like from the top to the bottom, because remember we're talking about four-year cycles. 2012 was a halving. 2013 all-time high. 14 is a reset. 2015 is a uh, well. 2015 is a reset. 2016 is a halving. 2017 all-time high. 18 is a massive dip, and 2019 is a reset. 2020 was a halving, 2021 was an all-time high, 2022 was a monstrous dip, and 2023 we reset. So from the cycles, from the top of the cycle in 2013 to the bottom in that range, 2015, it was an 85% drop of Bitcoin. In cycle two, from 2017 to 2018, it took about a year, it was 84%. In our last one, 2021, we thought, when I did this, we thought it was 19,047. That's only was 71%. I'm like, I only think that's, that's it. And then, of course, we hit 15,742 in 9th of November. And that's a 77% drop from 67,000. And I still said, like, I still see it going like 10 or 12K. But I've been wrong. So we'll see what happens. I could be wrong, but does that mean that... Uh, I'm going to stop dollar cost averaging. No, I just have a theory. So I actually stopped and we did a video about this two weeks ago, matter of fact. So since May of 2022, I've been doing what's called micro DCing. So instead of spending like a couple hundred bucks a day on Bitcoin, I'll just put 20 or 30 bucks, maybe 40 bucks a day on Bitcoin I, or 10 bucks a day. It doesn't matter. And I was doing what's called micro DCing. Then I was buying some alts some Ethereum and some Chainlink and some Cardano and some Polkadot and stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But fractions of what I did. Then two weeks ago, I said, you know what? You know, I thought we we're going to go down. And I just said, let's just go. Because I feel like since we're in 2023, I still believe in the four-year cycles. And I think that this is the reset year. So if, we're, if we go down, great, fantastic. That means that I can get some really cheap alts and Bitcoin. But we're going to have a halving next year, right? That's a guarantee, 2024. I think in March or April, somewhere around there. And usually that is a price appreciation type of thing. So I got another year to go. And then after that, maybe it's an all-time high, 2025. Maybe it's in 2026. I don't know. Even better. So for me, I've been, since two weeks ago, I've been just doing the same thing, dollar cost averaging again. So if I'm right and things go lower, great. And if I'm, you know... If I'm wrong, well, you know, whatever. Not too bad. At least I get to still, I get to still accumulate for two more years. Not a big deal. <laughs> Rob Blaze. 
Why are the gift card rewards always so on the Sweatcoin app? Is there a time the rewards refresh, like midnight's the time? It's a great question, Rob. Let's, uh, let's take this up to Twitter, shall we? Hold on. Great. So let's ask, hey, sweat economy and Oleg, who would see C, not the C, CIO, CMO, CEO, one of those two. Why are there, are there no gift cards? On the app. Rob, hold on. Faves wants to know. And uh, there it is. Okay. Now let's find out. I don't know, man. So, all right. Band is interesting. Uh, it's another article, I believe. And uh, it kind of competes with Chainlink, but in a different way. It could be great. <laughs> I just trade charts, rolls of race, rolls of toilet paper. doesn't matter. That's good. Hey, Rob, will ADA burn token sooner, are they? Um, Charles Hoskinson has very, been very against that. But I think the bigger question is, I need to read up on this. Is there chewing something with um, for for staking for the dynamic? I forgot what the term was. Were they looking at uh, some kind of registration, intermittent registration of something for for stakers? I don't know. Watch uh, Charles Hoskinson. It's just a just an idea. I don't think it's a proposal even yet. Okay. Jesse Powell's tweet just now makes good sense. I wonder what he said. Uh, let's see. Rob, Swan primarily, like others, say the Bitcoin is not crypto. We need to start to program ourselves to start understanding the difference. Hmm. Oh, because, well, I can see. I'm sure there's a reason for that. They're just going to call it like an asset and not a cryptocurrency, but that was the whole thing. <clears throat> Bitcoin, I was as was written in the Satoshi Nakamoto paper, and if you've never read it, it's only nine pages. We've done this a couple of times in the channel already. It's a peer, it's a peer to peer transaction model. That's what it was created for. Didn't say anything about a store of value. Didn't say, I mean, peer to peer transactions. That's pretty much what it was created for. And now we're, you know, filling it will fill in the blank. So I don't know. Yeah, no more Manhattan penthouse and Hamptons for Mashinsky. Probably not. Probably not. If you see my face get redder sometimes, it's because my blood pressure goes up. And uh, I got to stop that. I'm going to st stroke out one of these days. Loans are much bigger than, than the 80s. I can see that. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> what? Hey, Rob, I ran into an old Indigo video of yours in the DGen channel. Oh, if, you, if you're looking for like the more risky stuff, go check my channel, Dan DGen. And uh, we haven't talked about any projects in Sweatcoin, matter of fact. But we will be talking about this project here. It's a game uh, 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 that I'm doing all my work on called Alaska Gold Rush. And it's a play to earn type of game. Interesting dynamics and tokenomics. But uh, it's actually, they have a working game that's going to come out in like two weeks. I thought it was pretty interesting. So that would be that. So yeah. Anyhow, have you gone back and used the platform? It's been live and earning rewards. Uh, is it Avogachi? 
or is it against Okishi? We did, we did two, and those were the two that I remember. Yeah, Crypto Jeb, I've heard does, does good work for TA stuff. Um, yeah, Eric Crown. Eric Crown or Tom Crown? I just know Tom. Tommy Tom. Oof. Mooch bought it a dollar. For Algorand? I got to tell you, man. Not to say anything bad, but... Uh, well, I guess it's all, it's all a long-term play. What do I know, right? And if you... Ah, yeah, it does suck. If you bought it a dollar... You know, you're down 75%. That's okay. I mean, look, some of us bought Bitcoin at the peak and we're down. It's a bummer. That's just how it goes. So, let's see. Amy, you didn't miss much. Um, I just said how over 14 years history, it seems like we're growing as far as uh, Bitcoin wallet use. And then we took a look at Who's in the money? Who's out of the money? And Bitcoin and Ethereum and Polygon look pretty good. And Algorand, Cardano, and some other ones look pretty bad. But uh, we also took a look at whales. And uh, some projects look fantastic. And some, like Shibino, look totally jacked up. And that's about it. Mm. See, uh, there's all... Uh, Alicia says, I feel like I missed the chance to buy the bottom. So I just DCA and wait for a better bottom or DCA forever. You know, to DCA forever, if things go like how I think they're going to go, I don't see us going like nothing goes down forever. Nothing goes up forever. And uh, with the things that are moving along, I just don't see how we don't hit all time highs within the next couple of years. And that's I get that's kind of reasonable, I think. Let's see. Mm, yeah, Gareth Salloway is still expecting a dip. You know, what I like about Gareth Salloway is as much as he was a bear, he was never a jerk about it. He's just kind of like, yeah, he's like, you know, I'm sorry, but this is how I see it. And I'm still, you know, bullish long term, but short term is looking pretty awful. And he was right. I don't know if he's going to be right again, but we'll find out. <laughs> People making millions with tokens and trying to say they're just software. Are you kidding me? Look, Microsoft did pretty well with just software. I'm just saying. Okay, that's a good question. Hey, Rob, let's say I can only invest $20 a month. The safe bet, the top 10 coin or some S coins. These days, it might even be treasuries, T-bills. I know that's kind of a weird thing to say on a crypto channel, but if you're looking for the safest thing, I mean... Short-term, short-term treasuries paying pretty reason, pretty decently, and uh, yeah, safe. But for me, if I had, if it's me and I have twenty bucks, I'll probably just put it on the safest bet in the most volatile market out there, which is probably Bitcoin. That's it. <laughs> that crazy Swedish guy is trading uranium. That crazy Swedish guy would be CTO Larson. He's funny. Had the show a couple times. Very funny guy. Um, Pfizer, I can't, I have no idea. I'm not a big follower of that stock. Huh, that's an interesting comment. And where to go? Someone said biometrics are the next step for a cryptocurrency. It'd be interesting to see. Charles said... I'm guessing we're talking about Charles Hoskinson, maybe. It said to allow apps to do regulated stuff. It will require KYC and if voted in by the community. SBO uh, stake pool operators, such as myself, could choose that they want to run it. It's an interesting concept. I don't know if that'll work. It can work, but you have to really come out and say, well, if you're in America, now you have to register because America is not so much the land of the financially free, that's for sure. Home of the Brave, if you want to go up against Gary and the SEC. And that's it. Diesel Kane is here, though. <laughs> Any updates on your, th on your thoughts regarding Grayscale? Apparently, they're going to pull it out. Digital Currency Group is uh, looking to sell off 
uh, Genesis. So, I mean, looks like they're going to make it out unscathed. I thought that the contagion with FTX was going to run all over into Grayscale. Coindesk was also part of that group, and they were looking to sell. Don't think they sold it yet. So, maybe I was wrong on that one too. Maybe I was just maybe I was just a little bit too bearish. I guess. But uh, again, it doesn't matter if I'm, for me personally, if I'm right or if I'm wrong. If I'm right and we go down to a Bitcoin 10K, that means alts are going to crash even more. That means that I buy at a more, more frame. And even as it starts to go down, I do this thing called dynamic DCA and I will buy even more of a percentage than what I do now. Because I think in the next two or three years, we're going to see some all time highs. And then when am I going to sell that crypto? Because here's another thing. And then after this, we'll, we'll take off. But the thing is, it's, it's easy to buy. It's easy to buy the dip. It's easy. It's easy. I mean, for, for people who have been here a long time, when you're just getting into it, it's a little bit hard at first, but it becomes just normal over the years. It's easy just to buy and buy and buy. The hardest thing is to sell. Ask traders. Sometimes they don't sell fast enough. So there's a link in the description. It says when I'm going, and it's at the very top of all the videos I do now. It says when I'm going to sell, when and why I'm going to sell 80% of my crypto. Watch that video. There's a lot of indicators to look out for. And that's it. You know. And then along the way, maybe diversify a little bit. Maybe get into treasuries. Maybe get into stocks. Maybe get into real estate. Maybe you roll it into your own business. Do whatever it is. Invest in yourself. That's the one thing that's saved me in the uh, crappy bear market of last time. Rolled the profits into real estate. Worked out okay. But if I didn't, what a hurt. So just remember that. Anyhow, that's it for today, everybody. So look, thanks so much for hanging out with me on a Sunday. Almost a thousand people. I appreciate you guys. If you like today's video, apparently YouTube likes this like button. So hit that thing before you leave. Consider subscribing. We do this all the time. And then lastly, I know everybody misses the live streams. It just gets to be too much. But I have a plan to roll all of us, this community, into some other some other community platform where we can all communicate away from here. So if that sounds good, say something in the comments. But that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. Appreciate it. See you guys in the next one. Adios. Do-do-do.